Amen. God's good. If you love him, give him a hand. Amen. Amen. You know, there's been times that I've been down there in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, it seems like. And, man, you can't see God nowhere, but he's up there. Amen. And, and it seems like that you struggle sometimes in life, and you just can't reach up to where you need to get. And sometimes instead of trying to climb up, if we just learn to fall down, yes. get on our knees and pour our heart out to him, He'll answer our prayer and we'll get to where we need to go. Amen. Amen. I believe God's good. Let's give him another hand. Amen. Now the year was 1982. I'm sorry, 1820. 1982. I don't know where that comes from. But it was 1820. And old Pete, he was a very grateful man. Now old Pete had been on this boat, the ship, a sailing ship coming from London, England to Australia. And as he was sailing, you know, everything's going, and he'd been a sailor for a while, and they run into a storm. And the ship sank, and old Pete was the only survivor. And he's out there in the water, treading water, and the ship's done sunk, there's nobody else around, and all of a sudden another ship sails by and picks him up, and he says, I am really blessed. God must have a purpose in my life. For some reason, he spared my life. Well, that ship started sailing on to Australia too, and about two days later, it ran into a bad, bad storm, and the sails got broke, and the ship just broke in two, and again, it sunk. And the second ship, again, he was the only survivor. And he thinks, I must really be blessed. God's some got purpose in my life. Well, the next morning, another ship comes by, fix him up. This is the third ship he's been on. And he tells them what's happened. And in the night, that ship sinks. And again, he's the only survivor. And this happens the fourth time. And it sinks, and he's still the only survivor. A fifth ship comes by and picks him up. And he tells them what's happened. And that ship sinks. And he's still the only survivor. Now he's got some wood there from the shipwreckage. And he's piled up on it. And he's thinking, God, you're trying to tell me something. You spared my life five times. I don't understand the purpose you have in my life. Why have you spared my life? And he'd been in the water two days this time. And He's getting in pretty bad shape. And here the sixth ship come by. And they took him on board the ship and uh, put some clean clothes, dry clothes on him. And the doctor examined him. And everything was okay and he was in good shape. And the doctor said, sir, would you do me a favor? And he said, anything. God spared my life five times already. Anything. I'll do anything. The doctor went on to explain that there was a woman on the church. She was an elderly uh, on the ship. She was an elderly lady. And she had was trying to find her son in Australia. And he had run away from home and he was a teenager. She had not seen him. And she was real sick. But he said, if we can't find anything wrong with her, she just seems to be heartbreaking. But she's been praying for her son the whole trip. Would you go and pretend to be her son and give her some comfort in these life days. She knows everybody else on the ship. Well, he agreed, and he went to the room, and when he opened the door, <coughs> and he looked in his side, and he saw this silver-haired lady laying on the bunk, and his heart was broken. Because he could hear her sort of in an unconscious state praying for her son, Please, God, let me see my son again before I die. And the tears begin to stream down his face. As he looks up off that woman, he realizes that's his mother. And he's run away from home so many years ago with the power of prayer. He's brought them back together. Yes, there is power in prayer. Amen. Prayer will change things. Prayer will take the impossible and make it possible. Yes, Prayer will take something that looks like it's over the end and give you a new beginning. Yes, Prayer will, will feed you when you're hungry. It'll Amen. clothe you and make you warm when you're Come cold. On, Prayer, when you call on God, it will change everything yes. in your life. Yes, Amen. 
Amen. It will change a death sentence that you may be facing yes. into a life sentence. Yes. yes. Come on. The power of prayer changes everything. Does, the power you? of prayer. There's no limit to what the power of God can do in your Amen. life. Amen. We need to get a hold of what prayer can do. Yes. We're going to read the scriptures, the 11th chapter of the book of Mark. And this is Jesus here. Way on back somewhere there. Oh, that looks pretty good. Verse 22. Jesus told his disciples, have faith in God. If you have faith in God and don't doubt, you can tell this mountain to get up and jump in the sea and it will. Everything you ask for in prayer will be yours if, only, if you only have faith. Whenever you stand up and pray, you must forgive what others have done to you then your Father in heaven will forgive your sins. And I'm going to talk here just a minute before we read this next scripture. Jesus has been crucified. He's resurrected. And he's ascended to the Father. Now the disciples are, are sort of left alone. And King Herod has took James, the brother of John, and executed him. He's killed him. And now he has took Peter and put him in the inner prison in the dungeon. And here's what we're going to read. This is from the book of Acts. I think it's the 12th chapter. While Peter was being kept in jail, the church never stopped praying to God for him. Now I want you to get this in your mind this morning. Peter is in this prison, okay? It's dark, it's dingy. Cold. Very cold. And he knows that Herod is going to execute him yes. when the feast days are over. He knows what his future is. And he knows that he's got a guard chained on this arm, he's got a guard chained on this arm, and there's two more guards standing right outside his cell, David. Fact is, there are 16 guards there that are watching him. They're doing it in six-hour shifts. And there's other guards in the prison watching over every entryway into it. Now, Peter knows that he don't have the physical ability to snap that chain and get out. Amen. Peter knows that his friends that are on the outside are not strong enough to overcome the army that's guarding the jail. He knows that he is doomed unless God does something. But over here on the other side of Jerusalem, there's some people praying. And they're praying for Peter. Don't forget, there is power in prayer, guys. Yes, amen. Prayer changes things. Prayer will break your bondage. Yes. Peter was in chains. Soldier on this side, soldier on this side, two standing at the door. The angel of the Lord come into the cell. Snap, the chains is gone. He tells Peter to put his shoes on, get his coat on. The door opens automatically and he takes him out. The Lord, because of the power of prayer, delivered Peter from the bondage that he was in. But you know, if you and I are in bondage this morning, yes. if we're in bondage, yes. through some sin, He has come to deliver us from whatever that sin is. Yes. He's come to deliver us from sin and death. Because of what He did on the cross, what He did on Calvary, that sin that we've been bound to, He's broke that chain. In fact, is, He took our sins and put them on the cross. And because of what he did, we're no longer bound by death. We have eternal life, not eternal death. When we pass from this life to the next, we don't die forever in hell. We can go and be in heaven with him forever and live. Amen. Because prayer caused us to have a power over that bondage. Go ahead, Terry. Prayer gives guidance. I want you to notice that when that angel come in the room in the cell with Peter there, he didn't leave him alone. 
He didn't leave him by himself. He took him and guided him through till he had him outside the prison, okay? We're outside the prison now. The Holy Spirit, when we're in bondage and we get free from that bondage, the Holy Ghost will guide us in everything we do. Yes. Now, sometimes it's dark around us and we can't see. Sometimes life gets dark. And sometimes we stumble and we can't see where we're going. And God said, go to the left. And we're saved from falling in a pit. Or maybe he said, go to the right. And we're saved from some animal destroying us. Because the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us. Just like he did Peter. The next thing that this prayer did, it conquers the captivity of the enemy. Now, Peter, his chains has been broken. The, Holy, the angel has led him outside. So he's outside the prison. But he's probably preaching himself, has this really happened to me or not? Am I dreaming? Or is this a vision? But then he realized that this prayer has conquered the captivity. In other words, he knows he's free. And when we get free from sin when we get beyond where we used to be, if we'll hang on to that and trust God and believe it, we won't be looking back. We'll go on and become the Christian we need to be. Prayer gives gladness. Now in the story here in the scripture about Peter, when he left the prison, he went to this house and he knocked on the door. And there was a young maid there named Rhonda. I wrote it. Rhonda wrote one to one. What her name was? Rhonda, I think. But she laughed. She thought it was great. Peter's been set free. And when we're set free, we can laugh too. But I'm going to tell you what's really amazing. The power of prayer yes. will destroy your enemies. Now, King Herod, after Peter was set free, he don't know what to do. So he says, I'm getting out of town. He goes to his palace on the other side of town. And a few days later, he's up making a big speech, and the people say, he speaks as God. And what happens to him? The worms consume his flesh, and he dies. The Lord, because of the power of prayer, will destroy every enemy you have in your life. Yes. The power of prayer is amazing to me. The power of prayer can make water appear in a dry place. Yes. He made it come out of the rock when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Yes. I had a friend one time, and, and he dug a well. And after he got the well dug, he had to call the, the health department out to check the well. Yes. Well, it come back, it was bad water. Mm. And my friend did not have the money to dig an old well. So he come to me and he said, what are we going to do? What can I do? I said, let's me and you agree and pray that the Lord will send an angel <coughs> to fix that water. He said, great idea. We pray. Do you know that that day, that water was fixed and it's always been good water? Mm. Because it's the power of prayer that changes things. Yes. The power of prayer will extend your life. In the Bible, there's a story about a man named Hezekiah, and Hezekiah was a good king. And the man of God comes to Hezekiah, and he tells him, he says, set your house in order, you're going to die. And when the man of God comes and tells you, you're going to die, you're going to die. Yes. The Bible says that he turned his face to the wall and began to pray. Hezekiah did. The man of God had not even got outside the courtyard when the Lord said, you go back and tell Hezekiah because he prayed, I'm going to give him 15 more years to live. The power of God will change things in your life. Yes. The power of God, the power of prayer will defeat your enemies. In the Bible, there's a man named Jehoshaphat and he's the king of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is surrounded by these two or three armies and they're going to attack the city and Jehoshaphat don't know what to do. So he prays. And the Lord said, in the morning, get up, get your stuff off, go out. 
but you're not going to fight the battle. I'll fight the battle. And in the middle of the night, <coughs> those enemies turned on each other and destroyed each other. And the children of Israel went out and got all the spoil because of the power of prayer. In 1968, I was in the jungles of Vietnam. I was in a little fire base between Fubai and Quang Tri. The name of the fire base was Camp Evans. There was a little bit of fire base up to the other side of us, a little bit called Ripcord. Ripcord had just got overrun. And our commanding officer sent word that there were seven battalions of NBA, David, not Viet Cong, NBA, that were coming straight for us. And he sent the word down, there's nothing we can do. If you know how to pray, pray. I believe everybody in that camp was on their knees praying. And then seven battalion of NBA, I don't know where they went, but I know they didn't come where we was at. Uh. Because that is the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. God is able to do all things. Amen. The power of prayer can cause fire to fall from the sky. Oh, yes. In, in, in the book of, I guess it's in Kings, Elijah's outside on the city on a little hill there, and, and the king wants him to come in. He's going to punish him. And he sends a captain of 50 soldiers out there to get him. And you know, 50 soldiers can overcome one man real easy. Oh, yes. Not Elijah. He said, Lord, send fire down to consume them. Guess what happened? Fire fell out of heaven and consumed them. Well, the king said, I'll just send me another 50. Same thing happened. You're not going to outdo God. It's no. Fire can fall from heaven. Yes. After Jesus was crucified, after he was resurrected, after he ascended, he told the children, his disciples, to go into Jerusalem and to wait, tarry, yes. and pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Well, they're in this room now. I want you to understand they have a death sentence on them. If they preach in the name of Jesus, they're going to be killed. Yes, amen. If they gather together, they're going to be killed. And they're in this upper room. There's 120 of them in there. And they're pouring their heart out to God. They're praying. They're ringing the prayer bells of heaven. Yes. It ain't all, oh, oh, bless this and bless that. It's, oh, dear God. Yes. All of a sudden, there's a mighty rushing wind comes yes. through that place. The Bible says that clothing, tongues of fire, follows the them. Yes, amen. The Holy Ghost fills that place. And what do you see happen next? Those disciples that were scared to death, those disciples that had so much fear, were in the streets preaching and proclaiming Jesus Christ. Yes. It changes your life. The power of prayer. You know, I've told many times here, on when we was building our house, what God had done. And I don't mean to be redundant and keep repeating it. But we were building a house and uh, me and Dot, we're going to build this house by ourselves. I'm not talking about contracting. I'm talking about we're going to build this house. Me and this little woman over here now. And, and we've got the foundation up. And we're putting 32 foot long floor trusts that are that deep. They're that big. And I asked the guy what they weighed, and he said, oh, I guess about 70 pounds. More like 470 pounds. <laughs> well, we tried to pick them up. I said, that thing's nailed down. <laughs> no, it wasn't nailed down. <laughs> so Doc said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to pray. And no sooner had we finished praying, I heard somebody coming up the driveway. It was Brian. He'd been working graveyard, hadn't even been to bed. So I put him and his mom on one end, and I got on the other. And it took us about 30 minutes just to get it back there to the back wall where it went up. Not only picked up her. And Doc said, this ain't working. <laughs> I said, no. I said, let's bow our head and pray. 
We bowed our head and we prayed. And I felt somebody watching me. And I looked up and our guy stood. And he said, uh, you guys need some help? I said, yeah. Yeah, we need help. He said, give me 10 minutes. I got three boys. Let me tell you, they come down and throw them things up like this now. I said, okay. What do I owe you? He said, we'll talk about that later. So now when you get the floor down on these floor trusts, and you get ready to put the walls up, you call me. I said, okay. Well, now I thought he was being real neighborly and real nice, okay? I didn't want to impose upon his friendship. So we got the floor down and it's me and Dot again. We're on our building day and we got our, our building clothes on and our hammers and we're ready to nail. And that house is 60 foot long. <laughs> I know there ain't no way that me and that woman's going to put up a 60-foot wall that we nailed together. That's an impossibility. So, I'm going to build a 20-foot wall, put it up, and another 20, and another 20, being sensible. And I did. Built one 20-foot wall, and here he comes. He said, well, what are you doing? I said, we're building a wall. He said, we don't do it that way where I come from. He said, I told you I was going to help you. I'll be here tomorrow. Well, I was working graveyard. And I told him, I said, I work graveyard. I don't think he realized what I was talking about. So he said he'd be there the next morning, and I told Doc to go on down. And I'd get about two hours sleep that I'd come on down. When I got down there, they had that 60-foot wall done, another 32-foot wall, another 60-foot wall. They needed one more 32-foot wall. And she wasn't nowhere to be found. And they're standing there like this. Oh, she done made a mad. <laughs> <laughs> and Irish tempers done come out and said something. I said, is there a problem? He said, yes, there's a problem. You run out of wood. <laughs> Sent your wife to pay these to get the wood. <laughs> About that time, here she come to pick up the truck, loaded down the pay truck for on her. Well, we got that wall done. They said, you want to put the roof on? This in one day now. You want to put the rough truss up? I said, yeah. He said, excuse me, but I don't want you on the roof. You just have to carry him over here. I said, okay. Now, when he gave orders to do something, he never said a word. He just, you know, nodded around like that. Well, but we got them up, and he said, do you want to put a, the sheeting on the roof, the plywood? I said, yeah. Well, we put the sheeting on the roof. He said, all I want you to do he said, he's cutting. You carry it over here, flip it up to him, and we'll bail it down. There did get on the roof. He said, do you want to put the tar paper on the top? I said, yeah. But then it's dark. That house went under roof in one day because of the power of prayer. Yes. Now, I asked him. His name was John. I said, John, what do I owe you? And he looked and like that. And he said, been a lot of work here today. And I can see him dollar sign bad enough. I said, this is going to cost me $20,000. <laughs> and I'd gladly pay him. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm taking 20 nails off of this place. I said, what are you talking about? When is it? 10 up here and 10 down here. And he walked out. That's what the power of prayer will do. We got the building on the inside. And sometimes, I, you'll ask Dot, I had the tendency to want to get the cart before the horse. And we had this wall in, and we had it nailed in at the top, the interior wall nailed in at the bottom. And I said, oh, I've missed that wall by 14 inches. <laughs> I said, how did I miss that by 14 inches? Wow. That's a lot. You can't do anything to stab something over it to make that work. <laughs> no. So we begin to pray. And, and you think I'm making this up, you can ask thought. We've seen the wall move 14 inches. The power of prayer will change things. Yes. If you'll trust, if you will believe, God will do these things for you. I have seen the prayer 
of God. Open blinded eyes. I've seen the prayer and the power of God open, stopped up deaf ears that the doctor said that young and never hear. I have seen God do that because of the power of an almighty God that's accessed through our prayers. Yes. Now I'm going to tell you one of the biggest things that ever happened in my life. Somebody was praying for me. Somebody cared enough about me to pray for me. Now David knew me as I was a teenager. And David will verify what I'm getting ready to tell you. I was about a low life to scumbag that ever brought a prayer. I'd still cheat, lie, do anything. I wasn't saved, I was lost. I had a heart in me that was heavier than a rock It couldn't love anybody. Yes. I done good to love myself. I didn't like people. I was rebellious. You tell me that sign out there blue, I tell you it's red. You tell me the grass was green, I said, no, nah, it's yellow. But somebody was praying for me. Somebody prayed and I give my heart to God and He changed me. Yes, amen. So if you're dealing with something this morning that's maybe a decision, maybe something just overwhelming you, maybe it's bondage, if you're just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right.